coasting along like this one, building energy efficiency goals, greenhouse gas reduction, net zero design by 2030 and more. And yet our compliance rate is dropping. It's still pretty good to be honest. Um, but uh, the study in 2002, um, which looked at 1995 residential building energy standards, that's what RB stands for, uh, came in at 58% compliance. Um, so this is basically going in and checking to see a certain number of homes, how many of those homes really did comply with the energy code. Um, the study in 2008 looked at the 2005 Arby's code, found 72% compliance. The 2011 study also looked at 2005 uh, Arby's, found a 74% rate compliance. And the 2015 study um, looked at 2011 Arby's. This study was just released about a couple months ago. That found a 66% rate of compliance. Why? We have no registration, we have no authority, we have no verification, and no enforcement. So we can keep passing all those laws and regulations and requirements and standards, and we can have a net zero by uh, 2013, sorry, net zero by design by 2030 goal in the comprehensive energy plan, but only the largest builders are going to abide by it because they're the ones who can be found and can be targeted. All the other smaller shop folks who may not even know there's a code because I've done a lot of outreach over the last year and a half, and their guys, they come up to me and they're like, we have building energy code? Like, yeah, uh, since 2005, actually. So leveraging Vermont tools. Um, we can leverage Vermont tools and get a quadruple win. Um, if we had comprehensive compliance reform, we could help achieve our energy and climate goals. We could improve the local economy by making sure uh, that we're actually training our builders and also um, you know, the, the folks that are installing equipment to understand building science and also keeping those dollars local. Oh, and also making sure we don't have Frankenstein heat pump equipment in our homes. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, turning it into a butterfly. Um, and uh, we can increase market fairness. You know, the largest uh, building companies, they're the ones, again, who get dinged. For tech consumers, I really wish Jim was here. When uh, he was talking to me about this, because I helped him talk through it, he said, do you know I've been involved in multiple lawsuits over the last few years with homeowners who ultimately get stuck with the bill because their builder did not comply with code. And then they ended up trying to sell their home and there was an issue or there was a major mold issue or a health issue. And it's the homeowner who gets dinged. So if you care about Vermonters, you take care of this. What's a comprehensive approach to energy code compliance look like? Uh, we threw out four um, approaches. Uh, first of all, builder registry, pass S136. That is the Office of Professional Regulation um, actually setting up uh, a registration process for our builders. Um, and OPR could actually oversee it. Um, I believe that made it through the House this last year. Um, so hopefully it could get through the Senate. Um, Pro Tem Ash is like, I'm not sure I remember this. Um, authority, <laughs> authority having jurisdiction. Um, there is no authority having ju jurisdiction. We have some fantastic code experts at uh, Efficiency Vermont who will pick up the phone and say, well, in my experience of doing building energy science for 40 years, this is what I think they mean. Um, and the Department of Public Service is really helpful at picking up the phone and saying, well, I interpret it this way, but ultimately we have no buck who actually stops the stop unless you're in Burlington, Montpelier, or Brattleboro and you actually have um, an entity that is required to do this and has the authority. Um, so, you know, you could have it be the Public Safety Department, Fire Safety, you could have it be the Department of Public Service. Yes, you'd need to have a staff. It could just be one staff person who does random checks. It doesn't have to be the whole entire state in every building. Frankly, anything is better than what we have right now. Um, we would need some sort of verification um, to verify that a building really was either upgraded or built to code from start. Um, we have 130 auditors in Vermont who do blower door tests, we could deputize them. That's an opportunity for actually um, having more in-state dollars pay in-state Vermonters who have skills. Uh, and also there's this thing called Helix, Home Energy Labeling Index Exchange. 
Um, basically, it's a goal, it's, it's a process that's going on in the Northeast region, working with realtors in the Vermont area, it's working with Niren, um, to basically say, hey, this residential home, this home has solar, this home has been weatherized, it has a great home energy rating, a HERS rating, a HERS score. Um, there are like 25 different ratings for buildings that exist, but there are ways to actually get this visual so that you know what you're buying and so that consumers are pre protected and Vermonters are healthier and paying less for their energy. Education, this would offer an opportunity for more building science, get people into energy code. Um, it could connect into programs and incentives and financing and then enforcement options. Right now our statute says that um, if your building does not meet code um, and you sell it, it, your title is not affected. So uh, any legislator worth their salt knows that when you strike out NOT, that's actually really big, even though it just looks like one strikeout. Um, so Richard Fazy was like, but it's just one word. I'm like, uh-uh. <laughs> uh, but you know, if we did that, that would be a very simple way to make it, to put a, a trigger point that when you sell your home, if it is not meeting code, um, you will have a title issue. And otherwise, you know, there are other ways you could require every town to enforce whether or not a certificate of occupancy or a permit really met code, or you could, I know I'm running out of time, or you could um, regulate the appraisers and the real estate agents and the lenders. I don't think they want that. And that seems like a much bigger lift than not or striking not. Or you could have code officials in every town. And I don't think we have the money for that. So these are a bunch of different ways that we could move forward. Um, and we were asked to provide emission savings. Uh, these are what they would be. Thank you.